Joining us now on The Damage Report to break down the latest on family separation crisis and other issues at the border is Erica Andiola, Chief Advocacy Officer for Rice's Texas. Erica, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, very glad to have you here and to talk about these issues, uh, although I wish we could be talking about more positive news. but. This is the country we've got. So uh, not long ago, the Trump administration announced that it would simply be too much work. It would require too much effort to reunite the remaining kids that were separated from their families uh, last year. And they also said that it would be traumatic to the children to do that reuniting process at this point. Um, when you heard that news, uh, you and your organization, how did you respond to that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really just, you know, again, for me to think about the fact that this administration would actually use children and 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 their safety and their mental, you know, their mental, basically, they were traumatized just to be able to make a point politically is completely just, you know, for me, it's just another um, another reminder of what we're dealing with, and you know, in, in the current Trump administration, and you know, when they talk about uh, uh, this whole. Um, worry that they have that these children are gonna, you know, suffer from trauma by, you know, being taken away from their sponsors. Basically, the people who are able to take them out of, uh, you know, the shelters or the detention, detention centers where they're held, um, which, you know, they're, it's not their parents. It's basically you know, people who, you know, who sponsor them. They don't want to take them away from them because they think that they're gonna suffer some sort of trauma. Um, and it's it's ridiculous to hear that because just the fact that they were taken away without necessarily you know being told what what was going to happen with them, um, it's already a trauma for these kids. And so we're trying our best to try to reunite these families. Um, it's been really hard because unfortunately the government didn't keep track of every child that was taken away from their parents. And so that is you know that is the actual crisis that is happening at this moment. And I also want to mention that um, you know, back last year when uh, this, this issue of family separation came up, your organization was one of the ones that did the best work on making sure that not only that those people were taken care of, but that people knew about the severity of the issue. So uh, thank you to your organization for doing that last year. Yeah. And I also saw you had tweeted earlier today that uh, apparently the third uh, migrant to die in Border Patrol custody was identified. It was a 45-year-old migrant that died, I believe, just yesterday, actually. And uh, what did you think about that? Yeah, yeah, and this is not the first time. There's been many deaths, and if we remember, you know, there was um, a child. There's been actually several children also who have died in um, in ICE custody. And many people ask, you know, well, why, why does it even? What, how does this happen? You know, how does this even? happen and, and and you know it's there's so many reasons like people who are coming of course they're crossing the desert there's so much you know, they're going through so much and you know they their health is not or it's already not in good conditions but then what happens is that when they get into the United States they're basically placed in these places that in Spanish they call them las hieleras which is basically an ice box and it doesn't matter whether you know the family has a child they are still put into this terrible um you know uh, basically ice boxes uh, where people sleep many times for for several days without being able to have you know the the adequate um, clothing, blankets, anything to be able to keep them warm, to be able to have the right food, um, basic 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 human needs, um, they're they're not able to be met, and so we have seen that uh, children who come out of those conditions end up dying. Um, several have already died, and 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 you know this recent. Uh, death that just happened in the hands of Border Patrol. And so, you know, like I said, it's unfortunate that this administration is actually focused on building a wall, when in reality, the majority of migrants who are coming into the United States are presenting themselves. They're not crossing illegally. They're literally presenting themselves saying, I need help, I need to stay in this country or else I'm gonna get killed in Honduras or Guatemala or where, you know, wherever they're coming from. Um, or, you know, I'm gonna die, something's gonna happen to me. And so they're knocking at our doors and we're basically just receiving them with this type of conditions um, and with this just stupid, you know, wall that, that this president wants to build. And so why don't we turn to that? Uh, just a couple of days ago, Donald Trump uh, declared a national emergency at the border. Uh, so is there a national emergency at the border? And if so, is it of the nature that he described? 
let me tell you what the actual emergency is, is, is happening. And I don't want to use word emer emergency because there's so many things in this country that could be an emergency, like climate change. You know, like mm -hmm. a lot of the things that are happening in the streets with people getting shot just for being black or being Latino. I mean, there's so many things that could be an emergency in this country and that's never being paid attention to. Yet we have, you know, some, there is a crisis. There's definitely a humanitarian crisis that's happening at the border. Uh, just recently, uh, two of our staff members were at uh, Piedras Negras, which is across the border from te Texas. And there were about almost 2,000 migrants who were uh, put into this abandoned warehouse. Um, they were put in these conditions. Basically, they were locked up in there without, you know, let, they didn't even know. They were actually told that they were going to be given a ride by the Mexican authorities to the border. They get there and they get stuck in this um, old warehouse. They, they didn't have the right, again, they didn't have the right food. They didn't have any of the you know basic human needs that they that they needed. Um, and you know it was just it was so devastating for us to see. We couldn't help them. They wouldn't let us go in and help them. Um, and to us, that that is the actual crisis that is happening. And we're not dealing with it. In the contrary, we're, you know, the, the administration is creating more and more policies to make it harder for these folks to be able to come in. And unfortunately, if he does last another two years, he's going to have quite a bit of time to continue to do that with, you know, Stephen Miller at his side. So over the next uh, two years, assuming he finishes out his first term, what do you think that people watching this show, uh, maybe politicians, should do to help to constrain some of his worst impulses in this area? You know, we have been pushing Democrats. We have been pushing, and I mean, and your audience, I think, you know, uh, has been following a lot of the work that the immigrant rights um, community or the movement has been doing to push Democrats to do the right thing, um, and not necessarily just talk about supporting the undocumented community and the immigrant community, but also to be able to push back, you know, on everything that Trump is asking. And that includes all this money. I mean, basically, they, they gave him all this money again for, uh, for you know, DHS, for the Department of Homeland Security, that they didn't need. Yeah. They, they, they were, you know, basically just handing over all this money that they didn't need. And so we need to continue to push on Democrats to do the right thing, to not continue to give in and actually push back against Trump. Um, if not, we're going to see another two years of, of you know terrible policies coming our way. And I'm glad that you mentioned that because uh, while I think a lot of people were relieved to see that there wasn't going to be another shutdown, uh, at the time when the deal was announced, the fact that billions of additional dollars would be given, not only for building some of the wall, but for more and more security at the border. Um, thankfully, there were some representatives, including Alexandria Costa cortez and other freshman um, representatives who spoke out against that. But of course, it did in the end uh, end up passing. Um, in any event, uh, Erica, I want to thank you for joining us uh, and lending the, the the perspective of your organization who's been doing great work on this issue. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to talk in the future as this continues to develop. Thank you so much for having me. We'll do. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching this clip from the Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.